Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I want to talk about what happens if the hedgies can't pay. For example, what happens if Citadel get liquidated and they go under, they go belly up? Who's going to pay for our shares? Some people have been suggesting that there's a DTCC insurance policy, or DTCC themselves will foot the bill, or maybe the loss will be spread around all of the different banks across the US. But other people have speculated that maybe the DTCC will end up siding with Citadel and will bail them out and not pay us a penny and never buy back our shares or somehow force us to give back our shares and won't pay us for them. But I think a lot of people don't quite exactly understand how a short position works and how a liquidation works. So today I want to break down all of that and explain it for you very, very simply. But guys, before I dive into the video, I just want to give a massive shout out to the 3,800 of you that have currently dinged that notification bell because you guys are always the first to watch a new video as soon as it's released. So guys, be sure to drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell if you haven't already so that you don't miss another video just like this one. And guys, if you haven't already, be sure to check out the links in the description below to get four free shares with Moomoo worth up to $3,350. Also, once you've signed up with Moomoo, be sure to follow me on the platform because they've got a whole social network inside the app. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So... To start with, I want to explain how exactly a long position works when you trade on margin. So let's say you're buying $100 worth of stock on a 2 to 1 margin. That means that you're going to be putting in $50 into that trade and the margin provider or your trading platform is going to be providing the other $50 and therefore you've got $100 in that trade. If the trade goes against you and the value of your shares falls to $50, you get liquidated because the trading platform takes back their $50 and leaves you with nothing because obviously the trading platform doesn't want to lose any of their own money. Okay, so that's a long position. But how exactly does it work with a short position? Again, if you're shorting $100 worth of stock, you put in the $50 on a 2 to 1 margin and the margin provider or your trading platform provides the other $50. But so with a short position, you're selling to open. So with a long position, your $100 disappears and you buy $100 worth of stock. You exchange it. But with a short position, you're selling to open. So you sell shares for $100 and you put your own initial $100 into the trade as well. So technically, there's $200 in the trade. So obviously, when you short a stock, you don't immediately get an extra $100 into your account. You put your $50 and the $50 on margin into the trade. And then obviously you sell to open, so it creates a second hundred dollars because you've sold the shares. Therefore, there's two hundred dollars in the trade. So let's say your hundred dollar short position moves in your favor. For the eagle eyed amongst you, you will notice that I did just update this figure because I realized I had an error in my workings. At least I realize now rather than later. But so your hundred dollar position moves in your favor, and the stock falls all the way from a hundred dollars a share down to zero dollars a share. So therefore, of the $200 that was in the trade, $0 is used to buy back the stock. Let's say the company went bankrupt. $50 is returned to the margin lender. And then $150 is returned to you because you effectively made 100% profit on the trade as the stock decreased from $100 a share to $0 a share. But because you're on a 2 to 1 margin, it's effectively a 200% profit because your initial investment went from $50 to $150. But what happens if that position moves against you? Your $100 initial investment of $100 a share turns into $150 per share and therefore you've got a 50% loss. Or because you're trading on a 2 to 1 margin, you've actually got 100% loss. So of that $200 that's initially in the trade, $150 is used to buy the stock back, $50 goes back to the margin owner because they don't want to lose any of their money and you get $0 because your position's been liquidated. So how exactly does this work without the margin and how exactly does it work using Citadel as the example? Well, let's say that Citadel short one share of AMC at $50 per share. Therefore, they've got the $50 that they put into the trade and they've sold to open. So they've sold the share of AMC for $50, meaning there's effectively $100 in the trade. Let's say AMC runs up to $100. Therefore, Citadel get liquidated because they need to use that $100 to buy back the one share and therefore there's $0 left over for Citadel. Therefore, position liquidation. Now, obviously, it's not quite this simple because Citadel can continually average up their short position. Yes, Citadel may have started their AMC short position at $2 a share and therefore should have been liquidated at $4 a share. But because they continued averaging up, it effectively continued increasing their liquidation point. 
So therefore, maybe they started shorting AMC at $50 a share, but as it starts approaching $100, they can continue averaging up, and maybe they've averaged up their short position to $75 a share. So therefore, that's the same as Citadel opening a short position at $75 a share, meaning they put $75 into the trade. They then sell that share to open, meaning they sell for the additional $75, making $150 in the trade. Therefore, it increases Citadel's liquidation point to $150 per AMC share. Now, what happens when AMC runs up to $150? Obviously, Citadel get liquidated, and that $150 that's in the trade is used to buy back those shares and cover their short position. So therefore, at this point, the DTCC aren't even getting involved. It's solely Citadel's position in the trade which is used to buy back the shares. So let's put it into a real-world example. As of May, Citadel's short position was around $57.5 billion. Obviously, it's not quite that simple because their short position is made largely from call and put options, but let's just imagine it in a really simple way as if it was purely a short position. So they've started their short position with $57.5 billion and they've sold stock to open, meaning they've sold $57.5 billion and they've got their $57.5 billion in. So that's $115 billion, I think, of their total short position. Now, obviously, it's not quite that clear cut because $115 billion is way more than that AMC float. And the reason their short position is so high is because their short position is made primarily from put options, which are obviously just a collection of 100 shares or the contract and the rights to buy or sell 100 shares. So therefore, when the total value of their position moves against them by $115 billion, the entire position is liquidated and the $57.5 billion that they got from selling the shares and the $57.5 billion that they put into the trade is used to pay back us AMC shareholders. So therefore, providing AMC increases slowly from $100 to $105, $110, $140, 145 and then $150, at that $150 point, when they get liquidated, every single penny that they've got in the trade will be used to pay off us, the AMC shareholders. But where the problem arises is what happens if the AMC share price skips $150? What happens if the AMC share price is running up to $130, $140, and then there's a trading hall, a market hall? And then when AMC opens up, it opens back up at, say, $180 or $200, just because there's so much momentum behind the AMC stock. Maybe another hedge fund got liquidated and therefore they had to buy back pretty much the entire order book, every single order, all the way from 140, 150, 60, 70, 80, 90, all the way to $200. What happens then? Now, again, this is where the problem arises. Citadel have got that $75 from earlier that they put into the short trade. They then sold shares to open, meaning they've sold $75 worth of shares and they've got that initial $75 in the trade as well, meaning they've got $150 in the trade. So what happens when the share price runs up to $200 per AMC share? Well, obviously they use the $150 that they've got in the trade to pay off three quarters of our share, leaving them with $0 left. But obviously that only covers three quarters of their position. If we place a sell order to sell AMC at $200, they can only buy it back for $150, meaning there's $50 unpaid. Now, this is effectively the risky part when Citadel goes bankrupt and belly up. This is how we might not actually get paid because Citadel can only afford three quarters of their trade, of that position, of our sell order. So this is where the DTCC needs to step in and either the DTCC covers that $50 unpaid amount themselves or they split that $50 between the rest of the US banks. Now, this is where DTCC 2021-010 comes into place. Obviously, you've got the SFTs and the security financing transactions. So Citadel can sell some of their other long positions to cover that $50 unpaid amount. But again, what happens if their entire portfolio is liquidated? This is where that $50 unpaid amount is shared between all of the members in the DTCC or all of the members in the SFTs. That $50 is shared between all of the US banks. But I guess it also depends on whether the DTCC or the SEC intervene and make sure that the other US banks do actually spread this liability themselves properly or whether somehow the DTCC or the SEC bails the banks out or even potentially decides not to cover that $50 and just says to us, well, tough, you got $150, that's close enough. Now, this is the part that's uncertain. We know Citadel are good for most of the position. 
we know that they can afford to buy back most of our shares because they've had to put in their own money into the short position to, at the start to open the short position. And also they would have sold those shares to us, thereby creating effectively double the amount that they put into the trade. But obviously if AMC runs up so fast and actually jumps over their liquidation point and carries on going before they get liquidated, that's when there's gonna be an unpaid amount that might not be covered. I guess it very heavily depends on what their liquidation point is and how fast the AMC stock runs up. For example, if Citadel's liquidation point is at 100 or $150 and we start creeping up to that amount, if we hit $100 dead on and they get liquidated, then every single share will be paid for. But obviously if it jumps massively over that point and it suddenly just disappears from $100 a share and opens back up at $500 a share or $1,000 a share, that's when the big problems are going to arise. And this is where the problems arise, because even though they've got double the amount of their position in the trade, if the AMC stock price massively jumps over their liquidation point, they won't be able to afford all of the shares and might not even be able to afford, say, 75% or 85% of the share. They might only be able to afford, say, 10 or 20% of the share. Therefore, if we're trying to place a sell order for $1,000 a share and they do get liquidated, they again might only be able to pay $150 of that $1,000 a share. Therefore, the other $850 will have to be spread between all of the DTCC members. Hopefully that helps explain exactly how a short position works. Hopefully it explains how, to some extent, Citadel will be able to buy back our shares, providing that AMC price increases somewhat slowly and doesn't massively jump over their liquidation point. Guys, be sure to let me know down in the comments below what you think is going to happen to the AMC share price. Do you think it'll increase slowly enough for Citadel to be able to buy back all of our shares? Or do you think it's going to be massively out of control? And do you think the SEC and the DTCC are going to have to stump up a lot of cash in order to cover these liquidations? And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my others. Alternatively, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.